G'day everyone, welcome back to a new video. Now this isn't normally how I traditionally do things, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit today and I'll explain why as I go along. But in today's episode, I'm going to be going over two recent trips I've been on and I'm gonna be putting them in the one video because they're both amazing, they're both nearby to Karatha and they're worth sharing. So today I'm actually not camping or anything at all whatsoever and I've decided to come out here so I could talk to the camera and go through all of this the way that I wanna do it and do it with a nice background backdrop rather than the living room of my house. Now, two camping trips I've been on recently. The first one that I'm gonna be showing you guys is of the Montebello Islands. And then secondly, Millstream down towards the National Park, which is inland from Karatha. So both of these places are about a touch over 100 kilometers in different directions from Karatha being the center point. What I really wanna do is try to put this together. Instead of voicing it over and editing, I just wanna relive it in my mind how I remember it and then match it up to the footage that I took. So the Montebello Islands are an archipelago, normally about a three to four hour boat ride west of Dampier and Karatha. I was with Will and Jake on their boat and we had two Two mates, Lockie and Mel, come out alongside us. Now the boat ride over there did take us about four hours and along the way we decided to stop halfway across when we came across a spot of fish on the sounder and we dropped the lines down. I'm gonna play that right now and show you what we picked up. We got jerry cans everywhere, we got eskies everywhere, gear everywhere. We got, oh my, that's... Yeah, it's something on there. I'll need to get down the bottom. You! So hard, eh? Oh, you're kidding. Fast up. I'll be walk up, boy. <laughs> Race to the top. Pulling 16 kilo trout. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking the record. <laughs> the biggest fish you've gotten onto up in the pool so far, haven't you? <laughs> You puffed out, mate. <laughs> That's the one I just brought back in, eh? Leave. <laughs> 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 there. See you later. I mean, it's enough PC action, I think. Yeah, yeah. So that was a good bit of fun and we got onto some giant trevally. I think they were giant trevally. I'm not too much of a sport fisherman myself, but that's what they look like. That's certainly what they fought like. It was pretty good fun on the light gear. And we continued our journey on in pretty average conditions over to the Montebello Islands. Now, once we reached over there, we dropped the anchor down and we waited for about another hour for Lockie and Mel to get over. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mate, where the fuck are you? <laughs> Here comes Lockie and Mel. Woo! Woo! Look at him. 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 Oh no, it wasn't too bad. No, that's so <laughs> that's we, so we, we stopped for like half an hour, caught two GT, at, like way out in the middle. Did you? Really? Waiting for years and you weren't coming, so we're like, we'll come here. Yeah. And then oh, yeah. fucking, I jumped in. Oh, yeah, good move when our fucking bear, Jeff doesn't work either. Yeah. yeah. yeah and you do, and you do. Do. Hey, you got flares? Yeah, oh. wait, that's what I said. Lockie will shoot a flare if anything happens. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, I've seen it. I'd already got it. <laughs> Once we'd done that, we then went and searched around the Montebellos and we had a look at a few different islands that we were scoping out on somewhere to set up our base camp for the weekend. Yeah, this is sweet. One person 
passing, one person around. One person passing, one person filming. <laughs> so we pulled up on one of the beaches that we found after about an hour of scoping places out and we found the one that looked best for us for the weekend and the size of our crew. We dropped our gear off there, ready to set camp up later. And then we shot out back onto the water with some extra space on our boat, ready to have our first dive and get stuck into the diving and spear fishing for this trip. <laughs> So day one with the spear fishing, really the only aim of the game on that day was to catch enough fish for dinner and then we were happy with that. We were going to be there for three days so we wanted to keep our fish that we're going to take home towards the back end of the trip. Now on that first day we did end up managing between the five of us, we ended up having about three coral trout for dinner, maybe three crayfish and the same amount in squid again. We really were spoiled and then right in front of our camp there we also had heaps and heaps of oysters growing on the rocks. So we had an abundance of food and it was a magical time. Oh, did Lockie someone turn my isolator off? No, no, you're in gear. No, I'm in gear. Oh, I believe it's just up in there. I'm leaving that in the video. <laughs> It's like an hour of punch to the next spot, eh? <laughs> So to finish off night one with our dinner with our slightly bigger crew there, we just chilled out, had a few drinks at camp and uh, we got swarmed by the little midges and sand flies, exactly like what I'm getting swarmed by right now, but it's just inevitable up here in the Pilbara unless you go really, really far inland, you're going to have a bad time with these guys. <laughs> Different, I do. 
last one's on third. Thanks, Rowan, for cooking. Yeah, thank you, Rowan. Making the guests cook. I'm all right now. <laughs> Yeah, actually. That's right. You just play the Monty's card, man. Just like. Yeah, have you been to Monty's before? Yeah. Oh, fucking state, oh you're not a local, bro. You're only what? Have you been to Monty's? Shut the fuck up. Oh, that's the <laughs> One thing about the Montebellos that I realise is that there's really strong ripping current out there. I wasn't expecting that whatsoever. So with the diving on day two, as soon as we got in the water, we are in about 12 to 16 metre drop off there and Jake got straight onto a nice big Spanish mackerel straight away out of nowhere. Dives down, first dive, I seen him coming halfway back up. I was watching him with my camera. He swam out, I could see him chasing a fish and he shot about a 25 kilo Spanish mackerel, which was absolutely awesome. Unfortunately, there wasn't any more of them around. The conditions were really trying in that spot. We moved around a bit. I can't remember exactly right now off the top of my head what else we got onto for that day. day three all we did was simply got up in the morning packed up our gear and then i really didn't film much towards the back end of the trip but we got out for another dive so i'm going to play those dive clips right now and then we're going to get stuck into the mill stream events Okay, so all of that wraps up the Montebello Islands, but overall it was a really, real cool place to go visit. And I'm definitely gonna be in the market now for a bigger boat. I'm just sort of so indecisive about what boat I wanna get that I just have not been able to pull the trigger on one, but I'm gonna get a bigger boat so I can do more trips like that. And I wanna take my dogs to places like that. And with that one being done, now let's get stuck into the Millstream area. Do you reckon this would be a good intro to the clip? Bit of ASMR, sit down on my camp chair, camp's all set up, you have no idea what I'm doing, but I've got a microphone on and I'm gonna eat a corn chip, a flaming hot Dorito to be exact. You would think that the further inland you go, the drier it's going to get and the uglier it's going to get, but it does the total reverse here. Like Karatha is just a coastal desert overlooking the water with a whole lot of nothing around. So heading an hour south inland, I thought that was going to be much the case. So I was driving along down the highway, stopping along the way. It probably took me about four or five hours to get down to where I was going. And that's just purely because I kept pulling over and filming things, looking at nature, looking at water holes, hanging out with my dog. I was just having a great time and it was so relaxing doing so. Come all you young rounders and 
story I'll tell Of the promise of heaven And the warning of hell But Take heed where you ramble Or too soon you will go Way up on the hillside Where the new flowers grow well, he met in the springtime, the sun sang low. Two star crossed lovers in the still melting snow. Where the loving was easy and the courting was brief. There they called her a beauty. Called him a thief in the quiet of the evening. They'd so as my journey continued south, I ended up coming down towards the water systems there, and I could not believe what I was seeing with how tropical it actually was heading further inland away from the coast. It just got so vibrant, the trees looked so healthy, there was water everywhere, it was so cool to see. I had my dogs with me and we didn't really have a plan. What we ended up doing was finding a spot down on the river near one of the gorges there and we set up camp for the night. Come on, handsome. Come on, then you get. <laughs> Far out, that's so deep. <laughs> Squish this with my fingers. Yummy. That's it. Good girl. That's yours. And then an egg for graphics. There you go. Now show the camera you're a good boy. Hop off. Lay down. Lay down. Sit. Hop off. Hop off. Hop off. Yeah, good boy. Now, I don't really need a fire tonight, but we're allowed to have them. And I don't think I've lit a campfire since the fire ban down in the southwest last year, which would have started around November I believe, so maybe October. 
So it's probably been about six or seven months now since I've had a campfire. So we'll get this one underway just because we can and it helps keep the critters away so that I'm not getting attacked by big crickets like I said I was last time. We'll get this going and then we'll get a dinner cook up underway. Elmira's loving a new chair there from Drifter. Special thanks to them for hooking us up with that chair and that swag stretcher that you can see my swag mounted up on behind us right there. Elmira's certainly loving it, aren't ya? So there we have it, that's me sorted for dinner. Couple of lemon wedges there, broccolini, baked potatoes on the fire, and crispy skin coral trout, fresh caught from my last spear fishing episode. So waking up on the second day was actually the day that I planned to get up and do a heap of talking to the camera and catch up with you guys, kind of like I'm doing right now. Only I really eased into it and I took it slowly and I woke up and I was like, yeah, cool, I'm going to do something different in this episode and I thought that I would make myself a breakfast pizza because I really wanted to cook pizza on this camping trip but I ended up cooking the coral trout for dinner. So I made this breakfast pizza and I'm going to start showing you guys right now as I made it and prepped it all and got it all cooking. but. What happened was is I made it, cooked it, I got it out and I was ready to chop it up and then show you guys, start talking to the camera and get stuck into day two and then the weirdest thing happened. Now she's probably gonna see this by any chance but that's completely cool. But I was out there camping on my own and then suddenly I've gone to chop the pizza, I had the camera set up on the tripod and then this chick pulls up in a four wheel drive on her own and says hello. How are you going? going? Good, how are you? Mm -hmm. just came down to have a look and see what's down this way. Are you camping are you? This is probably, the dogs are friendly, they'll just come say good idea. And so I'm like, hey, how are you going? Then what ended up happening was we really hit it off and we got along really well. It was quite surprising. And then she sort of just said, oh, do you want to come check out this swimming hole that I found just down the track and we'll go, just go for a swim and hang out. And I was like, yeah, cool. Let's just do that instead. Next thing you know, I was there till the next day. The camera didn't come back out. We just had a great time. It was really cool. Now, what that means is I didn't actually get a conventional YouTube episode out of it, but we had a lot of fun swinging on the rope swing, drinking some drinks and hanging and now so going from there that happened on a sunday morning and i actually had to be at work on the monday morning really really bright and early for a six o'clock start so i actually did about a three hour drive at half two in the morning getting back up to karatha swapping my utes over from my personal vehicle back to my work ute and then getting back on the tools and yeah overall that was just such a cool weird little life event that happened that weekend and i don't know why or if there's any point in sharing it but i feel like sharing it because sometimes cool things happen and that was one of those things so thank you very much for watching this episode i hope this has all made sense to you it's going to be probably a bit crazy how it's all been put together but i've given it a crack i'm not usually one to do things this way but i had to get these out the footage is too good to not put out and i'm sorry that i didn't talk to the camera at the time but this should suffice. And for anyone that's reached out for me to go for a dive, thank you to those of you that I have dived with so far. Thank you as well to everyone that I come across in the streets that says they watch the videos and shows their support. Thank you. And that's it from me today, guys. So I'll leave it there. I'll see you in the next episode. It's gonna be a belter. I'll see you soon.
guys, that would be crazy, yeah.